Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I've got four easy and delicious ideas for Super Bowl snacks to share with you. Now, these would be perfect for, like I said, the upcoming Super Bowl or any game day. And if you're not into sports, no worries. You can make these anytime for any occasion, family game nights, movie nights, or just for a lunch or dinner. So let's get into these recipes. First up, we're going to take some help from the store and make taquitos and mini tacos with creamy salsa dip. Now, the salsa dip is from the plain chicken. I'll have her recipe linked in the description box below, but it's so ridiculously easy. It's just two ingredients. You'll need some refrigerated ranch dip. Just use your favorite brand or whatever's on sale. And then salsa. Again, use your favorite brand what's on sale. You can also make your own salsa. So to put this together, we're going to add the refrigerated ranch dip to a bowl. Add in the salsa. Mix it until it's well combined. That's it, like I told you, super, super easy. I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator until we're ready for it. Couple quick notes, I've learned over the years of making this that a thicker salsa kind of works a little bit better than a really thin, runny uh, salsa, just personal preference, uh, because as this sits, it will loosen up a little bit if you use a, a more watery salsa. And then second of all, uh, unless you know everybody who is attending, you know, your Super Bowl party or whatever you're having loves spice, I would stick with a more mild salsa. Now, I know some people have like a love-hate relationship with Ina Garten, but one of the things that I love about her cooking shows and cookbooks and things like that is she always talks about when you're having a get-together or a party, taking help from the store and not feeling like you have to make everything. You don't. You know, take help where you can get it. If you're not great at cooking or you're not comfortable with it or you're just busy or you're overwhelmed, take help from the store. So don't leave me any hate comments because I'm using frozen ingredients. If it doesn't work for you, skip this recipe. But if it's good enough for Miss Ina, it's good enough for me. <laughs> so here I got some frozen taquitos and frozen mini tacos. The best price I've found on these, honestly, is at my Dollar General store. But, um, you know, just grab a couple boxes. You can also get these at Sam's Club or I'm sure Costco too, probably at a good price. I'm just going to cook these according to the package instructions and bake them in the oven. Here's what they look like when they were done. And then to serve these up, I laid the taquitos and mini tacos out on a platter and then added the creamy salsa dip to a dipping bowl and served it up. And that salsa dip, I don't know what it is about it. It's just the two ingredients, but it is yummy, especially with the mini tacos and the taquitos. And you can use any kind of uh, flavors of the taquitos, chicken, beef, beans, whatever you prefer. It is super yummy and this is so easy to put together. Next, I'm making jalapeno popper bites. I'll have the recipe linked down in the description box below. I didn't follow it exactly. I made a couple tweaks, uh, but again, it'll be linked down below for you. So here's what I'm going to use. I've got some crescent rolls, cooked and crumbled bacon. I'm just using bacon pieces from Sam's Club. Some cream cheese. For the jalapenos, you can of course use fresh jalapenos, but I've got the um, already pickled in a jar on hand, so that's what I'm going to use. Just use whatever you prefer. And then I'm going to season this with just a little bit of ranch dressing mix. Let me show you how to put these together. I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. In this bowl here, I've got my cream cheese, and I started to mix it up and set out on the counter for a couple hours, but it wasn't as soft as what I needed it to be. So I just popped it in the microwave on defrost for about seven or eight seconds, and it uh, softened right up for me. I'm going to add in a little bit of that dry ranch dressing mix, and like I said, this is optional. Um, you don't have to add any seasoning at all, or you can add whatever seasonings you do prefer, and I decided as I was uh, mixing that to add in a little smoked paprika as well. So once that's combined really well, I'm going to set that to the side. Next, I'm going to open up my can of crescent rolls and unroll the triangles, and you're going to cut each triangle into two pieces. Now, the triangles are, of course, a triangle shape, so you've got a bigger piece and a smaller piece, so I just kind of pinched the um, smaller end of the triangle together, so it made a little bit bigger of a piece. I hope that makes sense. Um, once I've spread those out just a little bit and pinched the seams together, I'm going to then add a little bit of the cream cheese mixture. Next, I'm adding some of the chopped up jalapenos. 
Then I'm going to add some of the bacon pieces and then that's it. I'm going to pull the edges of the crescent roll dough around the cream cheese and jalapenos and bacon and just pinch the seams together. And then I'm gonna lay this down on my grease cookie sheet. I'm gonna put it seam side down. And I'm just gonna repeat that process until I've got all of my little jalapeno bites made. Now this is going to go into a preheated oven and bake for about 12 to 14 minutes until they're golden brown. Once they're there, this is what they look like. And to serve them up, I just laid them all out on a plate. Now, if you use a full can of crescent roll dough, you will get 16 of these little bites. I used half of the roll because I was just making it for my husband and I to snack on, uh, but these were tasty little bites. I feel like meatballs are a staple for Super Bowl parties, game day, tailgating. They're a crowd pleaser. They're super easy. Um, you can put them in the crock pot, bring them up to temperature, you know, on top of the stove or on a grill. So today we're going to make sweet chili barbecue meatballs. Now these are really easy. You'll just need three ingredients. First, you're going to need your favorite barbecue sauce. You'll need some sweet red chili sauce. I'm using this from Sweet Baby Ray's. It's just what I've got on hand. And then you'll need meatballs. Now I'm using frozen meatballs today, but you can of course make your own homemade meatballs if you prefer to do that. And I've mentioned this before on my channel, but I actually really like the meatballs from the Dollar General store. I've tried many different brands of frozen meatballs and I just prefer these. But again, use your favorite brand, use what you can find on sale or make your own. Now, I'll link a recipe in the description box below for this, but I just eyeball the amounts. We're going to add the meatballs to our crock pot. We're then going to add the sweet chili sauce, and I didn't have quite enough here as what I wanted, so you'll see me come in with some of the Asian Zing sauce from uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. It's just the closest thing to sweet chili sauce that I had on hand. And then I'm going to add in my barbecue sauce. And that's it. I'm going to cover this with a lid and cook this on high for two hours. After one hour, I did, uh, you know, take the lid off and give it a quick little stir and pop the lid back on. Now, you do want to make sure that you keep an eye on this. If you overcook your meatballs, they will become really, really tough and not not yummy. Um, a second note, if you or, you know, maybe some of your guests are a little sensitive to spice, you could cut back on the amount of the sweet chili sauce and just like maybe use half the amount. So here's what the meatballs look like when they were done. You can absolutely leave them in the crock pot. That's totally fine. You can also set them out on a plate here like I have and add some toothpicks. I have some of these football theme ones, um, but you could just use regular toothpicks or cocktail picks. And you could also set out like some sandwich buns, hamburger or hot dog, and people could eat them on a sandwich just like a meatball sub if they wanted to. But super quick and easy and yummy. So as I was thinking about things I wanted to share with you all in this video, Sloppy Joes kept coming to mind. I feel like they're crowd pleasers. Kiddos like them, adults like them, and it's one of the more uh, cost-effective, I guess I'll say, proteins that you can make for a big crowd as opposed to things like chicken wings and, uh, you know, maybe even burgers and stuff like that right now. I mean, meat is so expensive. Everything's expensive. You all know this. <laughs> um, but anyway... I was like, I really want to share Sloppy Joes, but Sloppy Joes are what? It's in the name, Sloppy. And when you're trying to watch the game or maybe, you know, eat and have a drink in your hand or cheer for your team, they're kind of messy. So I was like, there's got to be a way to make them that aren't as messy. So I started looking them up and I saw this recipe for handheld Sloppy Joes. I'll have it linked in the description box below. Here are the ingredients that we're going to use to make them. So first up, you'll need pizza crust. Now I accidentally grabbed the thin crust, which is fine. They, they turned out just fine, except you'll see in the end product, you can kind of see the Sloppy Joe mixture through them just a little bit, but it was still delicious. Then you'll need Sloppy Joes. Now I happen to use the Pioneer Woman recipe these are leftover sloppy joes, uh, but you can use your favorite recipe or just to keep it easy, honestly, just, you know, cook up some hamburger meat, add some canned man, which you'll be fine. And then you'll need some cheese sticks. Now, I just took a block of cheddar cheese and cut them into cheese sticks myself. And then for the topping, we're going to use a little bit of butter and some garlic powder. I've got my oven preheating to 425 degrees. I'm going to take my pizza crust, open up the package, unroll it, and then I just kind of press it out a little bit, just try to make it a little more even. I'm going to cut this into eight pieces. So you see me cutting it in half. I'm gonna cut it in half again, 
and then again and again until I end up with eight rectangles. Next, I'm going to take that sloppy joe mixture. Now, like I said, these were leftover, so I just popped this in the microwave for a couple minutes just to take the chill off. I'm going to add the sloppy joe mixture to the pizza crust and leave a line around the edges where there is no sloppy joe mixture. Next, I'm going to add a cheese stick and see, uh, I'm just cutting it down a little bit to make it fit a little easier or a little better rather. And then the recipe didn't say to do this, but next time I make these, I will add a little bit of the sloppy joe mixture on top of the cheese. So it's in between the cheese and the crust, if that makes sense. So once I've done that, I'm just going to fold the pizza crust up around the sloppy joes and the cheese and then just pinch the seams together with my fingers and then place these onto a greased baking dish. Now, a quick note about sloppy joes. Um, a lot of times when I make sloppy joes for us at home, I will use ground turkey. One, it's usually cheaper than ground beef, and two, it's a little bit healthier, a little better for you. Um, but use what you've got, use what you can find on sale. Next, I'm gonna take some melted butter and you can add a little garlic salt if you'd like. I'm gonna add garlic powder and then just a little pinch of salt. I'm going to combine that and then brush that over the sloppy joe pockets and that's it. These are going to go into the preheated oven. They'll bake for about 10 to 12 minutes until they're golden brown and this is what they look like when they were done. To serve these up, I just set them out on a plate. Um, you could serve these with a dipping sauce, I would imagine, like maybe some ketchup or barbecue sauce, uh, maybe some hot sauce on the side, but these were yummy. My husband, now he doesn't dislike sloppy joes. They're just not his favorite. It's not something he's ever said, ooh, I'm really in the mood for sloppy joes. But when I made these, he actually asked me to add them to our regular rotation. He really enjoyed them. And these heat up really, really well. You just pop them in the oven or the air fryer and they crisp right back up. And perhaps best of all, these sloppy joes were not sloppy. They were perfect for watching a game. You could just eat one with one hand. It didn't make a mess all over like sloppy joes normally do. So highly recommend you give these a try for your next game day. And that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.